Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video is going to give you an update on my personal setup, right? If those of you guys have been following, slowly transitioning into ASICs, do, did get my KA3 now, right? So I can experiment more with uh, heat extraction, right? So I'm going to give you an update on how that's going, what I've changed, because uh, that previous thought did not work. So we're going to go into why, why it didn't work, what I'm doing now, what I'm trying now, right? Because again, this is one of the biggest issues for me is getting rid of the heat down here in Florida with ASICs, right? GPUs is not as hot. These guys, even just a couple of them, ton of ton of heat. So we're going to give you an update there. Um, so if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned. All right. So let's get right to it. So for those of you guys who have been following, I did get my KA3. So that guy is in. It's hashing. It's doing its thing. Luckily, no issues with it, right? Been running a few days, no errors, no nothing. It's been doing its thing, right? So thankfully, everything's good there. Hopefully, a lot of you other guys who have ordered, you're starting to get yours if you haven't yet, right? Seems like a lot, a lot of people are starting to get theirs in, seeing a lot more videos, a lot more content, and that hash rate continues to go up, right? So let's take a look at the previous setup, right? So the thought process here, had this tent that I was using for GPUs, had cut a hole in the side, right? So the intake was gonna be on this side over here. It's gonna exhaust through here and then going through here and into the attic, right? Not a typical setup as far as like heating through the attic because typically most people's it's connected to the house. You don't want that heat going into your house. Again, my setup is fairly unique, so it's not really recommended, but mine is separate from the house, okay? So that's why I'm able to mess with my attic and it's not gonna affect the overall temperature in the house. And that was the goal is to keep everything separated from the house, okay? The other goal with the tent, the reason for doing the tent was to keep the heat in that tent so that the garage wouldn't get so freaking hot, right? And surprisingly, it did fairly well. I was expecting to have any of the insulated. I was gonna buy foam board. We'll see. But um, it actually did a fairly good job of keeping the heat in there. It was keeping the ambient temperature of the garage just about what it was without all that heat in there, right? So it was doing a good job there. The problem was though, right? I had stress tested it, seemed like it was gonna do fairly well, even with like six, 7,000 watts worth of heat. What I did not account for, so as far as just getting rid of the heat, did well there. What I did not account for was the amount of airflow required with the ASICs, right? Didn't realize how much CFM each of those little exhaust fans actually really does put out. So further researching into it, just so you guys know, each fan puts out about 250 CFM. So each ASIC has two exhaust fans times it by the two units in there. That's about 1,000 and about 1,200 CFM that it is putting out, right? So a lot, a lot of CFM. One 8-inch exhaust fan is only rated at 750 CFM. So the hope was that, you know, enough of the air was going to go out through there, but not the case. Even moving around the setup, I know it's not optimal, just had to set up like that for the video, but even flipping around, getting rid of that one tube and just having it be a straight shot into the attic didn't affect the temps at all whatsoever, right? So it, at the end of the day, it's just not enough CFM going out. Realistically, bare minimum would be two, maybe three, just to have enough to create a negative pressure. Because that's the other thing is that you want to just not have an even flow. You want to have it slightly negative so it is just sucking the air out, right? So because of that, not very realistic, right? So I ended up taking these guys out of that tent, out of that setup, because it just, it was not going to work, right? Because if it was already having issues with only two, the goal, the whole reason was to have three, right? So if it's having issues with two, definitely not going to work with three. So for me, it's a no-go, right? So this guy go back to being used for GPUs. Um, so let's take a look now at what the current setup is looking like. So now it's just out of the tent, right? It's just open air. So I have tried different configurations. One, this is how it's set up right now where the intake is facing the garage essentially like going and the exhaust is facing the wall. Initially in my head, it would have worked better the other way, right? Having it so the intake is there and it's exhausting into the, the open air rooms as far as like moving the air. The temps actually were worse, right? So kind of surprising there. So I ended up flipping it back so keeping it like this for now, just because for my setup, that's what was working best. Um, and I am now messing with the inline fan. Okay, so going to try this out, see how that works. 
So the issue now, though, with having out of the tent, because the other reason for having it in the tent was so that not that much air needed to be circulated, right? It was just the air that was in that small tent. Now having an open air, if I want to keep the same concept, I need to push out a lot more CFM, right? So right now I only have that little 8-inch trying to exhaust the whole garage, which, I mean, it'll work, but it's just not enough, right? So right now I do have on order a larger, like, shutter fan style thing that's going to go on the ceiling, and that's going to help extract a lot more air, right? And I am going to have to put in another vent probably on the other side of the garage. We'll just kind of have to cut a hole in there and add another vent, right? That way it'll force more air from the outside in. Because I'm going to probably make an additional air in vent on the, on the outside, right? Just to allow more air. I'm going to have it on the other side just so it's pulling in from that fresher. So hopefully that'll create enough negative pressure where it is going to allow more outside air in, right? So for now, it's on that little 8-inch, so the temps are going to be a little bit high because of that, right? Um, so this is the current setup. Again, the KA3 here is on top, K7 in the middle, a little KD light down here just for stress testing, right? So what I am trying now is that once I have that shutter fan up there, I am going to have these 8-inch fans to play around with, okay? So I have been... Thinking about this for quite a while, so I did find this website quite a while back, even like pretty much when I ordered, ever since I've ordered these ASICs, this has been the concern for me, right? This has been like what I've been waiting for to kind of like, so I've had different ideas as far as what to do if certain things didn't work, right? Backup plans for backup plans, just to try different things, right? Because again, the heat is a very big issue being down here in Florida, especially because we have such long summers, right? So this was an interesting idea. So this is from ASICBasics.com. He does also have videos. Doesn't look like he creates content anymore, but it is pretty cool stuff. The limited stuff he does have, it is very interesting. So it's at ASICBasics, and the website is ASICBasics.com. His idea was unique in that typically we've seen these 3D printed shrouds, right? People buy, they have these AC Infinity fans, and they typically will put it on the intake side. So most commonly, you get rid of the stock fans, Throw that guy on the intake side, and it's just going to blow air through the unit, right? Replacing those loud ASIC fans. So his concept was kind of unique in that, number one, he had it on the exhaust side, and number two, he kept the stock fans, right? And his idea was fairly interesting, and it seemed to work, okay? So the way his thought process was he did this primarily for noise reduction, right? So in this case, it definitely does work. We know those inline fans are way quieter than the squeal on the stock ASIC fans. One thing I did also notice to kind of validate a little bit more is that messing with the temperatures, once these ASIC fans go below 4,800, it was a big decrease in the amount of sound, right? Because the biggest thing with these things is that whine. That's what's unique. It's not just the, the, the air flowing. It's that whine that it creates. And I did notice that once they go below 4,800 RPM, they do dropped drastically, right? So his thought process, though, was to keep those stock fans on there to continue to use them, and it'll force these guys to run at a slower speed, right? So I think in his testing, he had them down to like 3,000 RPM, and this guy at like three quarters of the way, right? So it did reduce noise drastically while sucking out more air, right? Creating more airflow by using them in conjunction instead of the typical setup where the fans are taken out, people throw fan spoofers on there and run it that way. Um, my initial thing was, uh, it's probably going to burn out the fans, right? Having that force there on top of working fans, it's going to mess with the, the motor. But I did test this last summer with that KD Light. Okay, for those of you guys who have been following, the Light Series have a different style fan that is quiet. It's only like 2,500, maybe 3,000 RPM, if that, right? But they're fairly quiet, but they're a lot weaker. So here in the summer, in the garage... It was too hot. It was overheating. So I did have to put a blower fan in front of it directly right up against those fans. Didn't want to remove the fans. I was like, oh, I'll just keep them on if they die. I'll buy spoofers or I'll just replace them. Not that big of a deal. I just wanted to get it cool. Surprisingly, had it on there for the entire time and no issues with the fans. Right? Even now, it's just running open air because I do have more air circulation in there. And it hasn't had any issues yet. Okay? So that is something to keep note that surprisingly, it does work. Right? Worst case scenario, I'll have some extra fans on deck or fan spoofers because realistically, probably doesn't even need them. Again, I'm not really doing this for noise reduction. My goal is just airflow, right? Keeping this thing cool. So that is something that is unique and testing it out.
right? So again, shout out to this dude, acbasics.com. Interesting article, right? And it is interesting to try different things, right? So the 3D Shroud. So again, no affiliation with this dude, not shilling him, nothing like that. It's just the one I used, right? I actually bought one for the KD Light last summer. Held up in extreme heat, didn't warp, didn't anything. Fitment was on point, and it's fairly cheap, right? He's still making them. I just ordered one now for this one, and it's in. I'll show you the results there. It's about 30 bucks shipped, which is much better than some of the other ones, right? I know there's that one from, like, I think it's Fruit & Associates, but it's, like, 150 175 bucks, something of that sort. This is a much cheaper option, right? If you're thinking about getting them, again, just showing the one I've used. Had no issues with it. Shout out to this dude because it's a quality product. Um, so now let's get into, let's look at the setup now, right? So again, do have it open air. You can see here that I do have the shroud on there. No issues there. I have an eight inch fan exhausting the air, right? So kind of the cool thing with having these two guys now is that I can compare, okay? They're not exactly even, right? The KA3 is like 3,100 watts versus I have the lower end K7, which is about 2,800 watts. So there is going to be a 10% difference, but I threw it on the K3 first just because that guy was running hotter than the K7, okay? Also, I'm going to have a temperature comparison so you can see the difference in temperature, so you can see the results there. But take into account that there's not a whole lot of exhaust going in the garage currently because, again, I only have an 8-inch fan trying to exhaust the entire garage now, Right? So I did order a bigger, you know, like a shutter style exhaust fan. I'm going to throw that up there to help exhaust more air out, right? Because now I'm going to have to try to recirculate the air for the entire garage. Okay, so I'm throwing a much more powerful fan up there. Also going to create another vent probably on the other side of the garage, closer to where the air intakes are on the side of the roof. Okay, so I'm probably going to throw another hole in there. That way it'll suck more of the fresh air in from the other side of the room just to keep the air circulation good. Okay. The other goal here is also, number one, I didn't want to structurally do anything permanent to the house. So I did have it on like the, the attic opening. So that's where the, the fan is actually going to sit. The ventilation hole, it's fine. It's not that, that big of an issue. The other big thing, because the easiest fix out of everything would just be to crack open the garage door, right? Even just having that thing open a few inches, it would be an easy fix. But I do live in an HOA neighborhood and it is Florida. A lot of bugs, a lot of rodents don't want to have to deal with that. So also don't want to do that as well. The other issue I do have in the garage is that there's also no windows, right? If you have a window, easy way to ventilate, right? So that is something if you do have a window, easy way to circulate that air. But again, I am using the attic kind of as the heat exchanger just because, again, it's not going to affect the house because it's, it's connected, but the attic is separate. It's its own little attic just for the garage. So luckily, it's not going to affect the house in any way, which is the primary concern, right? Do not want it affecting the house in any way. So luckily with this garage setup, it works. But uh, there's that. There's a little bit closer of a shot. Bolted in just fine. No issues. Realistically, you may want to use slightly longer screws. Just something to take into consideration as only a couple threads did go in. Realistically, it's fine just for what it is. So no issues there. Um, so let's take a look at some temps, right, to see the differences. So here we have the K7 on top. This was taken in the middle of the day, so this was about 12 o'clock here on a hot sunny day. Not super high yet though, but it's about 85 degrees, which in the summer it's about another 10 degrees hotter, but arguably a little bit hotter right now because there's no cloud coverage at all, right? Typically in the summer, yes, the temperature is hot, but it's usually not like that the whole day. Typically we rain almost every day, get cloud coverage, a little bit of relief versus right now it's been straight heat straight sun right so if we look at the k7 the inlet temp so we compare both because again the the fan is on the k3 so look at the numbers on the bottom here i know it's probably kind of small so i'll read them out loud so on the k7 the inlet temp is 72 70 and 69 on the different hash boards versus the inlet temp on the k7 or the k3 excuse me that has that fan on there it's 67 all the way across the board right so I was kind of curious to whether just increasing the airflow through the machine was actually going to really cool it or if it was just going to need more fresh air, right? But we can see here that, yes, it does do it. Another thing to take note is that the KA3 prior to having the fan on there was typically about two to three degrees warmer on the outlet temp than the K7, 
So the outlet temp here was at 82. It would have been at 84, 85 down here. So take that into consideration also. Okay, so the outlet temp on the K7, which again did not have the fan, it's at 82, 80, and 78. Versus the guy with the fan, which again was running warmer anyway, is significantly cooler, right? 75, 74, 74, which is a good difference. Okay, it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but for me, the goal is to keep it under 80. Okay, I've noticed now the shutoff temperature with these guys after stress testing it is about 90 degrees. So if it sustains 90 degrees on the Allen temp, it is going to shut down. Okay, for the most part, I had read that was 85. I don't know if it's something newer with these, but it is at 90. The goal overall, obviously keep it as cool as possible, but definitely under 85. 85, I wanted it to be the max, ideally under 80. Okay, and so far, it looks like with having the inline fan on there, it's going to be doable. Right, so we can see the difference there. So it is definitely cooler, but also again, factor in guys that there's not a whole lot of air being extracted because of the fan. Okay, I only have one little eight inch fan trying to exhaust the whole garage. Once I have that other fan set up there, it's about three times the CFM. So that is gonna greatly increase the airflow and it is gonna increase the amount of fresh air coming in. Okay, so hopefully these temps do get better as we get warmer. If it stays here, this is the goal, right? The goal is definitely under 80. This would be the most ideal, right? 75, especially in the dead of summer, okay? So so right now, it's looking like it's definitely going to be a good thing to use that inline fan, okay? So that's definitely going to be the route to go. So I did order one just to kind of test it out. So I'm definitely ordering another one. It is going to go on there. And as I get others, they're going to go on there as well, right? I'll mess around with the speed, see if it makes a difference to maybe lower the speed. Maybe it'll keep it more... Less turbulence, better flow. I'll mess around with it, but at least for now, it's going to be a full tilt because, again, the goal is to keep things as cool as possible, right? So that's going to be the current setup. It's just going to have to be open air. It's just going to be hot as balls in the garage. But again, like I said, we mainly just use it as a gym, right? So it's just going to be <laughs> hot as hell. But realistically, when we're working out, I could just crack open the garage door because, again, cracking open the garage door fixes everything. These temps go down another 10 degrees, right? But again, being in an HOA neighborhood, can't really do that. Also, noise going out. It's going to be loud out there. Don't want to do that either. And a lot of bugs in Florida, right? Last thing you want to do <laughs> here is bring all the frogs and the freaking four-inch grasshoppers in the house, right? Definitely not something we want to do. Um, so yeah, guys, just wanted to give you that update. As I get these other inline fans going, I'll do another update to see what the temps are looking like, right? Again, the goal, I'll probably even set up some GPU rigs just to continue to stress test that garage. I'm kind of curious as to what is the max amount of heat I can keep in there, right? Especially on these super hot days. That way I can get a gauge because, I mean, it's not just my electrical that's going to hold me back from adding on. It's just, it's going to be the heat, right? You guys in colder climates are going to have the same issues, but if you are having heat things, things we're learning here can be applied to other things, right? So again, this is going to be an ongoing experiment. It's going to be playing with it, right? Because that is one huge difference with ASICs. It's just so much more heat, so much more airflow. So not even just the heat. Again, the, my downfall with that other idea was just getting rid of the heat. That's what I was focused on. With ASICs, it's also airflow. It's heat and airflow. Got to keep that air moving and keep it going. Right. All right, guys. So I know kind of turned into a long one, but it was some interesting stuff. Finally, as this is stuff I've been thinking about literally since I priority these guys back in like September, October, November. Right. So this is just something that's been on my mind for the longest. And I'm finally now getting to like experiment and see where things are going. Right. So hopefully you got some value from the video, guys. Going to keep you guys updated. We'll see how things go. Please comment, like and subscribe, especially if any of you guys are in hot areas. Right? Any of you guys mention any things that have worked for you, what things you would recommend, or anything like that, right? Especially if you guys are in hotter climates. I mean, here we get up to 95, but I know like when I was in Vegas, for example, got up to like a buck 15, buck 20. Um, the difference there though was that the summer was only the summer, right? It's only really hot those three months. Versus here in Florida, summer is basically mid March to like November, right? So. <laughs> Definitely have to deal with it a lot longer. It's not as hot, but we have to deal with the heat way, way, way longer. Okay? We do get relief here and there, but for the most part, it is consistently fairly hot. Right? 
So again, guys, please comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, guys, and I am out.